should be. Well, good afternoon, everybody. This is Bob Elson. We're set as usual for our Saturday afternoon show. And uh, even though uh, it's winter time, people are talking baseball, and it won't be long, and baseball will be here. One of the reasons why today uh, our guest is an old friend, Bob Kennedy, the general manager of the Cubs. Bob, it's good to see you, and you know time goes by so fast that, man, here we go into the holiday season, and uh, I imagine you have a lot of baseball concerns already. Well, we just left the meetings in Toronto uh, last night, and um, there was very little trading. I noticed that. And uh, there probably will be from now on, and I think Bill Vick is right in saying that the winter draft is uh, just about passe. You can do it on a conference call now. Well, there are a lot of clubs, Bob, that seem season after season to sit still and go no place. How can they afford to do that? Well, I don't, you know, it all depends on what their policies are. And it depends on how strong their farm system is. We haven't, we made a move with the second baseman early in the year. We didn't let Tyson get into the uh, re-entry where it would have cost us, uh, you know, the excess amount of money. But we th- felt that... Um, we were trying to get a left-hand starter, as we have been in the past, and we really don't have one outstanding young pitcher, left-handed pitcher, we can say, as a prospect in our organization. That's the one thing we're failing in, to get one. We may still pick one up. We can get one, but we're going to have to give a pretty good player for it, and I don't want to give a regular player for it if I can. Did you get one away from the Sox? No, Bill wants, uh, uh, he needs a, a few areas that uh, we also need. And um, uh, I think he's going to go in another direction. What uh, actually of importance did come out of the meetings? I don't know, really. Um, we made some changes in the um, in some uh, amendments to the uh, operation of the minor leagues. Uh, what's happening with the negotiations and so forth of the uh, basic agreement? That is. Uh, that's been pretty well settled, and that routine is uh, on its way. They're negotiating with the Baseball Player Association. Um, we are a little bit concerned, uh, like the meetings, for instance, uh, that it's so tough to make a deal now. For instance, uh, I see I picked up the paper and saw where we turned down uh, Lozinski and Christensen and, uh, and McGraw for uh, Suter. Well, I had a scout talk to me about it. And then when we explored it, why well, they said, well, we meant uh, Luzinski for uh, Suter or Christensen for Suter or McGraw for Suter, you know, one-on-one. And it really didn't come out the same way that it came out in the paper. And um, plus, That would have been a nice package for you. Well, plus the fact that uh, Luzinski had two years ago in a contract. Christensen can play his, his um, option out after this 80 season. He's a free agent. And McGraw is a five and ten player. When they, when you have five, ten years in the big leagues and the last five with the same club, you have to get that player's permission to uh, be traded. He has to get permission to go someplace. And if I know pitchers, they don't want to come to our park. Hitters kind of come, but pitchers don't want to come. And for instance, uh, John Curtis. We drafted John, selected John Curtis. That I was telling you before in the free agent in the re-entry draft. And we made thirty-five phone calls to uh, Capstein and his agent. And all we got was a busy signal and no answer. And the day he signed with San Diego, he Capstein called to apologize. Well, I can't repeat what the conversation was, but we're, Capstein and I are no longer talking. <laughs> Not that I would have paid what Curtis got, but at least I ought to have the right of refusal. You know, when people talk about Wrigley Field and they say it's no pitcher's paradise, what about Ferguson Jenkins? He didn't seem to bother him at all. Yeah, Fergie ought to be in the Hall of Fame now. You know, really, they ought to yeah. canonize him, really, because of, uh, what was it, seven years he won 20 in our, in our yeah. pub? And that's outstanding. Although uh, uh, McLaughlin likes to pitch in our ballparks, and it doesn't bother Ruschel, and Lamp doesn't seem to make, it make any difference with him, and it sure doesn't bother uh, Suter. No. Of course, no park bothers him, so. And I think Tidros pitched well in our ballpark, and I think young Cordell is going to do all right. You know, with the importance of relief pitchers, and you seldom maybe once in a span of 20 or 25 years, you come up with a relief pitcher like Suter, you probably would be pushed right to the wall to make a kind of a deal involving him, wouldn't you? Oh, I think I don't think there's any doubt about it. Any time you would trade a player like Suter, it would have to be so overwhelming from another club yeah. 
that I don't think any one club has that much uh, uh, ability. And, in fact, uh, at one point when I was here as a manager, uh, there was some talk about trading Billy Williams. In fact, I think Cleveland was uh, involved at the time. And I said, all right, let's start with McDowell. And let's go to Calavito or somebody else. And they said, well, we couldn't do that. I said, well, to warrant a trade of that caliber, we'd have to over, it'd have to be overwhelming on our side. So it's, it's very unlikely anything would ever happen in that area. Bob Kennedy, what, what, what's being done by baseball to have a sense of equity, more balance in baseball so that, that the have not starting another season figure to be just where they are and so on and so forth. Is baseball concerned about the overall good and balance in the league? Yes, I don't think there's any doubt about that. It's getting more and more so because uh, a year ago, uh, in 79, 78, 16 clubs lost uh, money. And um, uh, even though we drew more people, I think it was not that bad this year. I think some of them came fairly close to making or breaking even or losing less, let's put it that way. And, in fact, let's put say Pittsburgh, for instance, they only drew, what, a million four or a little less than that this year, and even with the championship ball club. And they have a pretty good-sized payroll. Uh, I do think that one of the things possibly that, uh, and I think it's been talked about, is that uh, maybe a little better compensation for a player who's going in the reentry draft. You know, I think to maybe to even it out, make it a bigger penalty when you lose a player. What about the radio and television rights? Well, I think they're going up. They've been well. I think they've done well. Uh, but everything else goes up. So whatever increase you get in revenue, the, your expenses are are corresponding to it. So it's a question of how equal it is and, and what you're going to do for the future. How does the, as you, as you view the season that will be here before you know it, what, what is the outlook for the Cubs in your opinion? Well, we have set, uh, of course, we, we feel we've got a, uh, a good sound second baseman to start the season in Tyson, who's been a good second baseman, outstanding fielder, and has hit about uh, almost 255 or 256 or something like that for his average up to this point. Uh, we feel that uh, we have Tidrow full season. Uh, Jerry Martin, whose knee bothered him extensively the last half of the season and fell off, and we had that operated on and taken care of after the season. Well, there was some stuff left in the after they repaired the cartilage uh, a year ago in Philadelphia that they left. The, they didn't clean it out properly. And uh, Dr. Compier went in and took care of it uh, good. And the knee is good and sound now. So we feel that he'll be a definite asset to us. And uh, Kruko, which had a who had a bad arm practically the last month of the season and missed turn after turn, he's sound. Uh, Hernandez is pitching in winter ball, and he's all right now. And, of course, young Caudell came along and pitched well for us. He had the misfortune a few times, but I think that uh, he really improved and showed people that he's ready to pitch in the big leagues. So there are some pluses, and I think now McLaughlin has settled down. He knows he's going to be here. I think that's uh, that's a plus for us. And uh, Foot, uh, we take off about 20, 25 pounds off of Mr. Foot, or else he's not going to play here. Uh, that'll be a, uh, that's a little program we're going to check on now and get on and see if he's having too much of that chitlings and, and, uh, grits down there in Carolina. We're going to slow that down a little. But we feel, uh, we feel pretty good about the ball club. Certainly we'd like to make a, we'd like to make a change, but we don't want to make a major change. You feel that the club played good ball for five months and actually fell apart in September. Uh, we, uh, but in September, Kruko couldn't pitch. Martin couldn't play properly because of the knee injury. Kingman came up with a shoulder he jammed and running into the wall. Foot, uh, sprained his back and Anaveris had a groin injury. Now, Anaveris, we've got him on a Nautilus program all winter down in San Diego. He's already started, been, been there for about two weeks now. And, um, he's doing, uh, and several of the ballplayers are working out here already. And uh, we feel that our ball club and the attitude of the club is good. That's fine. Our guest today, and we're delighted to have him, is Bob Kennedy, the general manager of the Cubs. And we'll be back with our guest in just a moment. Our guest today, and we're delighted to have him, is Bob Kennedy, the general manager of the Cubs. And 
Bob, the the Tidro deal, that, that really surprised me. How were you able to make that deal? Very easy. Just called. <laughs> well, what did you... What did you? It seemed to me like a one-sided deal. No, well, it turned out that way. Ray just Ray uh, Burris had a, had a bad, you know, just had a bad year and couldn't put it together over there. That doesn't mean that uh, on the surface at the time it looked like uh, they were getting the better of the deal because Tidwell had not had a good year. Neither had Burris. Both needed a change, and it just turned out that we got lucky. Now maybe this year it may not, may turn around the other way. But at the time and the way it looks on the surface, it looks like we did all right and we're very satisfied. But Tidrow's in a unique position, too. This this is a year this, he can play this year, and then his contract is up. So we have to renegotiate with him beyond this point. And uh, that's one of the reasons I think, for instance, Detroit got rid of Lafleur. Lafleur has a year to go on his contract. And they tried to negotiate, and I think they came up with a $2.8 million offer, and he wanted more than that, so they felt that they... There's no sense in continuing. They couldn't negotiate with him to sign him to a five-year contract with Detroit. So they felt they better trade him now rather than try to wait to the end of the season because the opposition club is going to have the same problem. Mom, Kennedy, what's behind some of these unrealistic salaries? Marvin Miller? No, no, no. The owners. It's not, uh, you know, the ballplayers aren't using a gun to get this money. It's the ownership that uh, feel that they owe it to the fans or there's a pride of ownership that they think they have to win and they're going to go ahead and spend this money. Uh, for instance, uh, Nolan Ryan. Here's a club finished one game out without Nolan Ryan, and they're going to pay him a million dollars a year. Well, I, I, uh, for instance, Suter signed for this year, but he has the right to renegotiate the contract. I gave him that right to get him to sign three years to begin with. But he is signed, he has the right to renegotiate. Well, when he looks up and sees uh, Ryan get a million dollars a year, you can imagine what he asked for. But he is not in a position to play his option out for the next three years. So we may not satisfy Bruce and probably can't for what he's worth, but uh, we know he's going to be here. Well, I don't profess to be an appraiser of talent, but in my opinion, Nolan Ryan isn't worth a million dollars a year. What did he win, 17 and lose 18? No, no, it wasn't even close to that. Um, but the point is, uh, I think this draft and the number of players and the talent of the players who were in the draft and the amount of money they got was idiotic. Yeah. The talent wasn't there. Uh, John Curtis, for instance, uh, got a million eight or something for five years, and John Curtis is a, it might be 10 below 500 as a pitcher. Um, and Rudy May, who's 35 years old, got a million dollars from, from the Yankees, you know, and. Uh, hey, you may, you might start playing again. And, uh, yeah, I wish I could. <laughs> Our guest today. <laughs> is Bob Kennedy, the general manager of the Cubs, and we'll be back with our guest in just a moment. We're delighted to have Bob Kennedy, the general manager of the Cubs, as our guest at Northwest Federal today. Bob, what, what's the outlook for the, for the National League? Where, where's the power going to be? How do you analyze it going into the season? Well, pretty much like, the, like it was at the finish. I think the Phillies are going to be a better ball club. I think they had an abnormal amount of injuries. And I think that uh, one of the things, that, of course, we, as I say, we were 9-22, and 22, but Pittsburgh and Montreal did not have an injury to a key player all year. Not one injury. And that was really a blessing. And uh, even though we hung in there, as I say, for five months, uh, when we did have injuries, we didn't have enough pop to off com overcome it. And of course, when we got uh, six, seven, eight games back, then the attitude, you know, say, well, we can't win it. And of course, it was a big letdown, and, and then they couldn't get it back. So, uh, but I still think that Montreal and uh, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, the ball clubs that are going to be, uh, and St. Louis, if they get any kind of pitching. Uh, there were some people who wondered about your managerial choice, figuring that. Very few pitchers make successful managers. I don't know what your experience has been or what you've viewed along that line over your baseball career, but I can think of one pitcher who made a good manager. That was Hutchinson uh, with Detroit and uh, one or two others. But have you ever heard anybody say that, that pitchers don't make good managers because the back, the, all the play is behind them all during their baseball. They don't see anything. Well, we have a few pitchers like that. Uh, but uh, 
I think you're, you're probably right, and I think a lot of pitchers don't want to be managers. They're not uh, that uh, into the ball game. Uh, however, you know, everybody said, well, uh, Preston Gomez hasn't won, and uh, but I can name you a pretty good manager that never won anything till he got to the big leagues, and that's Casey Stengel. I mean, he finished last or almost last wherever he was. And, and so all of a sudden now at uh, 60 years old, Casey came to the big leagues, and all of a sudden he was a genius. He, you know. So it all boils down to talent, let's face it. It's the talent on the field that uh, gets the job done for the manager. It's just like being a teacher in school. If you have good students and they listen and they operate, you're a smart teacher. And if they don't, well, then you're not so good. So it's, it's the same old story in, in every walk of life. And we feel that um, we feel that Preston's a good man. He's a knowledgeable baseball man. He's been in managing for a long time and knows what he's doing, a good fundamental man. And uh, he's been with a great organization, which is the Dodgers, which is known for their good fundamental play, and, and uh, he has a great background. Is there a shortage of real big league catchers in the majors? Uh, yeah. Remember the old saying years ago, raise your boy to be a catcher or raise your boy to be this? It would seem to me that as you evaluate the, the catchers going around the major leagues, that there is a shortage of outstanding catchers. There's a shortage of outstanding anything. If you took a look at this year's World Series, it might have been the worst played World Series there has been in history, regardless of weather. Uh, they couldn't catch the ball. They didn't know where to throw it when they got it. And uh, it was a very bad fundamentally played series. And very disappointing to baseball people to see championship clubs walk out there and play like high school kids. And uh, this reflects all our, um, all our play. In other words, I think that the clubs should play better than that. Um, there is no question that the uh, catching is a tough position. A lot of people don't like to take the knocks that are back there. You have to have a certain type of individual. And uh, it is a tough, very important position to fill because here's the guy that nothing starts until he starts making a move. And a catcher who is a leader uh, on your ball club makes your club. Over the period of years, and I know you've been watching baseball a long time, have the Cubs ever had a catcher who had the ability that Hartnett had? Well, you took the words out of my mouth. No, I don't think there's ever been anybody close to Hartnett. I don't, yeah. Maybe not in, in all of the baseball, not only the Cubs, because I remember Charlie Grimm saying that uh, I didn't have to do much managing when Hartnett was catching. And I'm sure that Bill Dickey did the same thing, and, and uh, Mickey Cochran, and uh, uh, the boy that's down in Texas now who was the best catcher in baseball, Sunberg. Uh, he's outstanding. There's no nobody comes close to him as far as a catcher in the big leagues, and I'm talking about bench also. Uh, Who does he belong to? Texas Sunberg. Oh yeah, he's been down there for some time, and um, uh, we would like to be able to get somebody like that. We think that Foot's a good leader. We think that Foot takes over and handles pitchers well. I think he, one of his his biggest problems is probably not being as good a shape as he thinks he's in. And weight, weight is the greatest detriment to an athlete there is. Weight is the greatest detriment to an athlete there is. Did you ever play for a manager, and I know you played for many, who insisted when you come to spring training that your weight be just what it was supposed to be? Well, most. Boudreau was that way. Boudreau was that way. When I was at Cleveland, Louis was that way. Al Lopez was definitely that way. Jimmy Dykes was that way. Of course, Dykes, uh, if you weren't, you wish you were sorry because all you did for about till you got it there was run. You didn't get the hit. You didn't hit too many. So everybody got there pretty good, except half right in those days. But uh, Tubby, Tubby could hit, so he didn't have to worry about it too much. Well, pitching-wise, how are, how are you set? We think good. good. We've got some good young pitchers. We've got a young pitcher by the name of Martz. Might make the ball club this year. Left-hander by the name of Riley. Guys who's pitching well, a young left-hander. Uh, Capilla, who didn't do too well to start with, but the more he pitched, he got better. And uh, we think Caudell, who is pitching outstanding right now down in uh, Puerto Rico, uh, just continuing like he pitched during the season. And uh, we think uh, Kruko's arm is sound, and Hernandez is pitching all right. So we feel that uh, we have enough pitching. We just feel that we have to build our confidence, and, uh, and we can stay healthy in certain areas. For instance, Kingman, of course, is a, a big man. Get foot signed, and I think we're on our way. Defensively, you've got a pretty good ball club, haven't you? 
Well, sometimes in the outfield we uh, we have a tough time finding a ball, you know, especially when it's hit under our hat or something. And I'm going to send Bittner a hat this Christmas and put plexiglass on the cover, you know, so he can see through it when that hat drops on the ball. I think you know what I'm talking about on the ball. But uh, with the uh, Dylan A, who is leading the league down in the Dominican Republic, he had 10-day session with Harry Walker when the season was over down in Birmingham. I sent Cookie Rojas with him. And we're going to try to get him another 10 days before spring training starts. And he's been outstanding as far as taking over and doing the same principal thing that Marino did with the Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Now, the one problem area he has is throwing. He's got a fairly strong arm, and it takes him so long to get a very unusual arm action. And I don't know where he got that. Must have been from chopping that sugar cane over there or something, and he could never get out of it. But uh, uh, he has abnormal ability as far as go getting the ball and speed. Now, if he can't go or whatever Preston wants to do, of course, I, th- I f- still feel that Scott Thompson's the solid center fielder. He's got the speed and the knowledge to do it. Uh, we think that Martin would probably be a better right fielder than he is center fielder. Jerry had a little problem trying to find out where to throw the ball, and he didn't exactly recognize our infielders when he was throw, th- throw the ball to him. Where is uh, Kingman spending the winter? Uh, San Diego, on his boat. He's fishing most of the time. He's got a tough life, you know. It's really bad. He's well, he lived on a boat here, didn't he? No, no. He has an apartment here. He has a boat that he fishes after the ball game. He goes out and fishes, and uh, which is good. I wish uh, some of our other fellows would, uh, you know, take up and do the things that he does, and uh, we'd be all right. <laughs> well, the season will be here before you know it. Boy, the time goes by so fast. Uh, you open at home. This year? No, we don't. Op- we open on the road. We play two series before. We open the 10th in New York. Then I think we go to, uh, I think it's Pittsburgh. And then we come back to Chicago and we open here the 17th. Oh. Who do you open with? I think New York. Here. New York. Yes. Our guest today, and we're delighted to have him, is Bob Kennedy, the general manager of the Cubs. And baseball will be here before you know it. We'll be back with our guest in just a moment. We're delighted to have Bob Kennedy, the general manager of the Cubs, as our guest today. You know, it's nice to be talking baseball here in this wintry weather, although it's rather pleasant in Chicago weather-wise right now. But that always means when you start to talk baseball that before you know it, uh, baseball is going to be here. And uh, last year you fellows had a fine year attendance-wise. Oh, well, you know, the Cub fans are just, uh, you know, out of sight. Yeah, that's right. That, that's what kills you, you know, when you play as good as we did for the, for through August and then play as lousy as we did in September. That's what, you know, it just kills you, you know, because uh, you try so hard and uh, then you fail and uh, when you really should be charging. And uh, it's not an easy thing to take. It's something that you uh, you lose a lot of sleep over. Well, I suppose there's a natural tendency when you figure you're out of it to let down, and I don't know how you were a player. How do you overcome that sort of thing? Well, you just, uh, we feel, our ballplayers have got a lot of pride, believe it or not. They really do, and I think that this year, and with everybody being together, and I know Buckner is going to have an outstanding year. There's no question about that. And that was a big item, too, that Buck didn't have the year that he's capable of having. Well, he never has been physically sound, has he? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's huh? he's fine. Is he? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he limps a lot just to get sympathy. <laughs> you know, he don't pay any attention to that, you know. I think that's a, you know, he's trying to help the fans, you know, and the other team and then take an extra base or something. But don't worry about old Buck. He'll be there. Well, the infield is set, right? Well, I think Preston feels that way. I mean, don't don't ask me. I just put the players out there. Preston's going to get the, you know, that's his job. When is he going to be in town? He was here. Well, of course, he went back to California for the meetings. He was at the meetings. And uh, he's in a process now of getting his father from Cuba to the United States. And he's got a lot of visa problems. He has to go through Mexico. And, and it's really quite a quite a deal to try to get him out of Cuba. And uh, this, this is what he's really working on now. Well, Bob, we've enjoyed very much having you as a guest today. And a lot of Cub fans around here, believe me. We're all pulling for the Cubs to have a great year, and I hope, you know, I hope they have such a good year. It even surprises you. Well, that'd be a nice surprise, wouldn't it? Oh, gee, yes, uh, yeah. We could, uh, we could rest in peace. I should say. Yeah. 
We've enjoyed talking today, talking baseball with Bob Kennedy, the general manager of the Cubs. And it won't be too long, and baseball will be here. In the meantime, uh, today and tomorrow, there's a lot of football on the tube for you to listen to and to watch. And, of course, a lot of big bowl games still coming up in football. But once they get by that time, then we start really talking about spring training. And before you know it, our nation's number one sport will soon be here, and that's baseball in my book. Anyway, have a nice weekend. And now this is Bob Elson saying goodbye until next week at our usual time.